Okay, let's do it. Uh, tell me about yourself. So, have you have you heard about our work to begin with? You, you know about us? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's been uh, it's been quite a few years I've heard actually about open source psychology. I don't remember when exactly, but probably at least ten years. Oh wow! Um, oh great. Uh huh. So yeah, I mean, so I was fascinated by seeing what you're talking about, JOGL. And uh, I want to get down. You, you, you can say juggle, actually. How do you say it? Jog juggle. Juggle. Yeah. Like juggling. You could you could see yeah you could see it that way why not? Mm -hmm. Juggle. All right. Yeah. Juggle. Juggle or juggle or juggle. Juggle as you want. <laughs> juggle. Okay. Um, yeah. So hopefully we can connect on a topic of. Like the message I hear from your work is about increasing the scope of what you solve for, right? Uh, can you tell me more about it? Because that's how we think about our work. We always say, okay, let's solve bigger problems because if collaboration is true, we can do more and there's less work for each of us. It's a basic principle. Now, very Absolutely. few people understand that, I believe. Um, but it seems like you guys understand that pretty well. So tell me more how you guys approach it. Yeah. So uh, a little bit of history. Um, so myself, I started as an academic researcher back in the days. Um, yeah. Uh, I specialized in biotechnology and what we call synthetic biology. Mm. And uh, and but um, when I was actually uh, starting my PhD uh, back in France, it was the early age of synthetic biology, and uh, there was basically no lab. So I actually had to build. Uh, the lab in which I did my my PhD, uh, and um, and and even though I was in my own lab, I was not able to uh, you know work with non-academic people. Uh, it was very hard to uh, to work with designers, architects, uh, non-researchers, uh, even engineers. So um, I heard for the first time of the DIY bio movement in two thousand nine. Uh, it was just starting in the U.S. Uh, in Boston. I loved the philosophy. It was exactly what I was looking for, uh, and so I decided to bring this philosophy in, in, in France and Europe. And uh, and as I, I already built a, a lab, so okay, I'm just going to build another one, but outside academic you know, walls. Uh, and so I did that. I, I joined a squad, uh, a hyperspace in the suburb of Paris. Uh, I fell in love with the spirit over there, um, and uh, and so I said, okay, let's let's do a biohacker space. So uh, we started with a few like, the community, and uh, the idea was to, uh, to just rethink what is a laboratory, a biotech laboratory, between the 21st century. And uh, and what well, what happened next actually like, pretty blew my mind because you now we started to have this beautiful community, interdisciplinary community. Um, and we, we did an amazing project based on equipment we were just refurbishing. Mm -hmm. uh, you probably know, or, know this kind of spirits, but um, you know, when you come out of academia, this is not usual. Like, everything costs uh, a lot, uh, everything takes time, uh, any kind of collaboration, the time you take between having an idea and you know, making it happen can be years. Uh, Wait, ho hold on. In, you're saying that's common in what? In academia or in, in academia. business? Academia. academia. Yeah, yeah, in academia. Okay. It's, in academia, you don't have this prototyping spirit and it's yeah. very hard yeah um and um and so because it's it's in institutionalized uh in yeah. a sense like way more so so there you know you know you could have like any kind of idea you had the people around you and just love you, know, you, could, you could just start and prototype the idea right away so i love that spirit it's like why don't we have that for science in general yeah um yeah and um so uh, I developed uh, the, the you know, La Payasse, which was the first biohacker space in, uh, in France and then became you know, quite, quite important because at the end of my PhD, I decided to move out of academia and go full time, uh, basically com becoming an entrepreneur, even though it's a non-profit, it's community based. Um, and they take like, how do we create a business model around uh, such, a, such an open laboratory where the group is to make it sustainable, you know, um, and yeah. uh, where you're, you're basically you're not attached to uh, being in abandoned places and, uh, and and only volunteers. How do we start paying people for doing you know, such a you know a dream job? Um, and um, so we, we moved actually I successfully co uh, convinced the mayor of Paris. Okay, you know we should have it in, in, in 
just you know give us a small grant and we manage um, there we are we take a space of 800 square meters that's about eight eight thousand square feet um, and right in the center of Paris, and we built this open laboratory with biotech. Uh, that was back in 2014. Does it still um, exist? It still exists, yeah. Um, send a link? And Can you send a link? Mm -hmm? Can you send a link to that place? Sure, yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, your message is similar to us, being independent on funding and doing what you are self-determined to do and enabling that for others. Yeah. yeah. So that, that was my first experience, uh, you know, as a community entrepreneur, and I don't have a good word for that, but, uh, and, um, and, and in parallel, also, one of the projects I, I started in this lab uh, became also a biotech startup called Pili, and uh, we focus on making, basically teaching bacteria how to convert sugar into colors. Uh, to replace all the petrochemical dyes in the world, uh, especially in the textile industry. Uh, and now that's a project you you're engaged in. You you took that. So part that we started. I started this project um, eight almost yeah seven years ago now, um, and now it's uh, it's a full fledged uh, biotech company. Uh, it's twenty people uh, doing R and D uh, to uh, to to scale this uh, basically and to replace the petrochemicals uh, dyes. Is um, that you're still involved in that or that's? I'm 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 I'm. I'm I'm not involved anymore in the sense that uh, three years ago I left leadership positions in both Lafayette and PD to focus on drug. Uh, I'm still I'm still uh, you know, uh, a board member at PD. Uh, my my partner is uh, is also a co-founder and uh, the creative director of this uh, of this company, but I'm not involved operationally anymore. Um, were they open? So it's, they were an open source. Were they? Wasn't the open source? Uh, and and so that path is not open source now. In the sense, which I tried very much to make it open source, but biotech is definitely not ready when you go on cutting edge biotech uh, industrial application to be to be open source. You know, it's uh, we're talking about you know eight to ten years R and D, uh, very costly. You need we raised so far eight million euros. You cannot do that if you're fully open source in biotech. Um, and so we had to you know basically be a down to earth. It's okay, you know. Actually, we, we cannot do it. Uh, maybe we can we can free some IP later on, but right now we actually need to uh, free some IP. So that's the biotech company, and so that gave me also a lot of experience in terms of entrepreneurship um, and raising funds stuff like that. Um, but my my true interest and mission dream was really actually to change the way science is made, uh, and uh, and so I, I came back to uh, to building communities um, and. Um, when I was at La Payas, uh, we were a physical space, and so our mission was mostly an activity where mostly turned, you know, focused on the local community. Um, and so, it and you know, there was a lot of biohacker spaces and other kind of community laboratories around the world. But clearly, there was, you know, even though we knew each other and we talked to each other and we sometimes met, you know, in conferences and uh, blah blah blah, there was no real collaboration, like no real. Um, you know, project with a true critical mass, uh, you know, uh, of people working together, and I was always frustrated by that because I saw that you know the day you know those people those people can collaborate you know with one because with you know uh, they will have the critical mass that is that can be compared to a normal institution, um, and uh, and they will be able to do like truly amazing project, and then open source open science can really become true, um, and. Uh, but for that, uh, you need a platform. Basically, you need to be able to synchronize people. You need to uh, to uh, to facilitate, you know, their, their connectivity, uh, and not only to talk to the people that are already convinced of doing open science, but you need to find a way to just bring in, you know, normal professional people, students, you know, to just you know, join in and contribute to the investment of open knowledge and open source innovations. Um, and so that basically became the mission of Drogo, just one giant lab. Um, it's a non-profit also uh, and uh, we see ourselves kind of like a, a distributed research institute uh, where anybody can be a member and contribute and we're here our mission is to support existing communities or to, to support communities that wants to be created you know communities of, 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 of knowledge of skills that wants to work together on, on you know specific goals so uh, 
uh, at the end is um, providing them ways to uh, to create teams, to find collaborators, to uh, to figure out what's going on uh, out there. Uh, do we, do, you know, if if you're you know project leader, you want to know is there something similar that is happening? Who are the people involved? Uh, who can help me? Who are the people with the right skills that wants to contribute voluntarily? Because you know, there is no money transfer on Drogo, so everything happens here on it's on, on the volunteer based. Um, and um, on the other side, uh, you have people that have, you know, either have a job, but they're they're either happy or not happy. Students that are looking for for you know, experiences, um, and it's very hard for them when you're not part of the, when you're not part of the innovation world, the research world, to know what's going on and what kind of what, what kind of project uh, you get involved in. Uh, and, and even though you once once you find a project, it's very hard actually to get in contact with the right people to, to know exactly on what parts you, you know you can be useful. So uh, the, the very first thing we enabled on Drogo was you know if you have a project, you you are, you, are, you provide needs like you, you declare needs for your projects, and uh, and um, and then those needs are used to match you know projects and people together. Uh, so it could be a need in terms of skills, or an action, or a resource. Um, and and so the, the platform is fully open source and, and free and so uh and uh, so we basically lose money building it so it's, it's not part of a business model um the way we make it sustainable for drug oil is we build research research programs on top uh we you do what? what's what's your revenue model we build research programs on on top of, of the platform and and, and then um, basically Providing the community a way to focus on specific actions. So um, right now, for example, with the COVID-19, we launched uh, on the first of March the Open COVID-19 program, where you know the idea is let all come together, let's structure this ecosystem, um, and let's provide resources. We go and find partners that wants to help. Uh, basically, teams of people that are just being created. So see it as a very long-term. Uh, long pace hackathons. In a way. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be existing projects, it could be new projects. Um, and the very difference with other existing open innovation platform is that we really encourage collaboration. So it's not about who's going to win, it's about, you know, let's come up together with the best solution. So uh, at the end, what matters is, you know, if, if we have, uh, let me take you, uh, give you an example. We, um, at the very beginning, we had about eight or nine different diagnostics projects. Um, you know, open source diagnostics projects on the on Drogo. Now it's only down to four uh, because uh, the the team fused and they started collaborating. And now they have way better chance of uh, actually succeeding in the, in the collaboration. I mean, the the the, the results they're sharing now is really really impressive. Um, and so this could become actually the the first diagnosis that you know, open source diagnosis test you now for for uh, an infectious disease. For so COVID? if that's working. I mean, for COVID first, but if the technology is validated, what they're doing, it means that it could be for other kind of diseases. Are they truly open source or is it fake? It's truly open source. Everything it's it's uh, it's mandatory. If you want to be part of Drogo, it needs to be open source. What license yeah. do you use? What, what sorry? What license do you use? So, it depends on what you do, right? It's uh, if it's hardware, if it's uh, it's, if it's web code, but uh, it needs to be permissive. It needs to be permissive, so it yeah. needs to be really open, even for commercial applications. Yeah, of course. Yeah, um, because at the end, what matters to us is really to at the end that those you know those technologies, those tools, this knowledge can be used anywhere on the planet without restriction. Well, um, I mean, if you come up with this test, I'll be interested in replicating it. I mean, we our goal is to create um, basically campuses which have a full full infrastructure. So think of it as a university campus. But it's more than yeah. that, yeah. So, so the open source medical stuff would be a part of that. So basically, frame a regular community, but in a fr form of a like a known university campus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, definitely be interested in that. So there's good progress that so real good science is being made in one, those those. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. It's it's really impressive. Like to give you um, one of the projects is a collaboration between uh, two community laboratories, kind of like biohackerspace, if you want. One biotech startup is in New York, and and the CDC, uh, a guy from the CDC. Uh, so it's like the authorities, the startup world, and the community-based world. Uh, it's just collaborating right now. I mean, this is exactly what I was 
have been you know waiting for for like the last 10 years to happen and yeah. now finally it's, it's happening it's beautiful um and the, and for example the startup the biotech startup they're okay with the open source terms yeah yeah absolutely do, do you have a hard time convincing people are, are you uh what are your learnings I mean, on on people being afraid of open source well the thing is we make it clear from the get-go is that um if you want to develop your own thing don't come here yeah you know there you go so um yeah. and if however if you want to play the game and and find collaborators and do something which is going to go beyond what you're doing so yeah for example the the the, the Baltic company it's not the main business model to work on this on this uh, test kit right and start doing something else it's just that, that they happen to be to want to to get involved and to to, to play a part in this uh in solving this crisis mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, um the other thing we do is we uh so so you know, we we uh we invite partners to uh, to join us and provide so that we can provide more resources to uh to the community and and so now since uh about two three months ago we started providing grants uh so that's a huge difference uh, so because a lot of those projects, they, 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 they were born, you know, uh, only a, few, like a couple of months ago. Uh, and, uh, and between people that didn't know necessarily each other before, they, they, there is no like a, a official entity summarizing the project. You know, you, you don't have like a company or a non-profit, whatever. So, so, uh, and, and, and so there is no time, you know, to, uh, for them to, uh, to, to formalize themselves, to, to apply for funding. So what we do is, uh, we created a, an open community based peer reviewing system where and any projects can, uh, can apply, uh, for what we call a juggle micro grants. Uh, it's up to 3,000 euros. And, um, you put your application, it's transparent. The committee review it. There is uh, like a set of questions and that provide a score for feasibility and impact. And if you go above the score, automatically you are you know, being funded. So it's not even us that choosing that that, that choose you know which projects get funded or not. Oh, excellent, um, excellent, yeah. Where and are you getting um, the money from that? So and, you're doing fundraising with partners. And so yeah, exactly. So it's part it's part of our of our mission too. It's like we convince uh, traditional actors such as foundations, public institutions, that um, through us they can fund projects that are you know, not, not typical. Uh, people that will ne they will never reach otherwise. Uh, and so that where we can get to diversify uh, you know, the type of innovation that is feasible, that is possible. So mm -hmm. through, so you're basically fundraising yourself, uh, rev I mean, you're supporting yourself through this by doing yeah. fundraising? So yeah. yourself, you're getting paid through this? Yeah. That's right. So it's uh, it's it's all in the same package. Is um, you no know, when we go and find a partner, they fund as much juggle and and the project. So basically, we you know there is part that goes to juggle and the community animation, uh, the development of the platform, and then uh, basically a big chunk that goes for 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 the for the for the grants. Yeah. Do you have open books like you can you share how much your team makes and all that? Actually, not yet, but we should. Yeah. Uh, how many team members do you have that are actually uh, getting supported by this? Um, right now, the team uh, is about 15 people uh, getting paid by Jogo. Um, I would say like half half is in, uh, in the development of the platform. And we have five developers and two UX designers. Uh, and then uh, we have the rest is in the coordination, uh, you know, management and, and communication. Can you help us do that? We we're, we don't have an organization. Yeah, it's that the thing I, I learned the hard way. <laughs> it's it's uh, that's one of the the few things I became I would say okay with you no know, quite quite good. Uh, so I, I can I can I can share some good practices. Okay. Um, so where do we go, where do we go from here? Do you want to think of something that we can do as a project? Yeah, I mean. What the first thing um, when 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 you reach out, uh, the first thing I saw is so what, what the one thing we're doing right now is so Jogo is is a neutral place, right? So we even though right now with Open COVID nineteen we were you know forced to create our own community because we are very young. You know, we're going to celebrate our one year anniversary on the 29th of June, and uh, and so um, so first everything is new. Uh, you know, before the crisis, we were very underground. We were not even prepared, you know, to face such a such a, a big flow of people. 
uh, the servers crashed like three times, uh, and uh, so we had we had to develop everything very fast. Um, and um, so, however, what's happening is um, you now we have now existing communities joining Jogo and using Jogo to structure their own ecosystem and to basically cross breed with uh, other communities. And so we have the IGM community, which is fantastic, you know, uh, open biotech community, um, and. Uh, uh, we have uh, also other kind of communities we will be joining, like the Low Tech Laboratory. So it's a community in, uh, mostly in France, but uh, also in Europe, interested in, the, in low tech, uh, low technologies. Um, we have um, we have the Africa OSH, uh, Africa Open Science and Hardware uh, that wants to join. So it's just beginning. So we are th the fact that they're not yet here is uh, we're going to release uh, during the summer like major. Uh, like updates of the platform that will enable um, existing communities to retain some of their identity. Because right now, if you join Jogo, it's kind of like dilutive. Um, you know, you become part of a giant community, but it's 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 not um, you know it's not obvious to see where you come from, where you are attached. You know, what 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 kind of community you're part of. You can be attached to a project. But to an existing community, right now, it's not very well done. So we've, we've been working on that. Um, and so the idea would be to see how we could support, you know, open source ecology uh, and see. Is there a possibility where you can teach me some of your techniques and maybe we can get access to some of your funding streams? Like teach us how to do that and maybe we could do something like a common branch? Yeah. Like with maybe like focused around a common project? Yeah, absolutely, okay. yeah. So here's the deal. You ready for this? Because this is serious. <laughs> okay, Go for so, it. so let me give you the spiel. Um, we've cracked through a lot of barriers on extreme manufacturing if you followed what we do. We can build a tractor in one day, we can build a dozen printers in a word. The, wow. the, the concept of extreme manufacturing where you get a swarm based collaborative production process using modular breakdown that we learned from software. And you can apply that to hardware. And so Joe Justice from Wikispeed and ourselves, we did the, you can read on Wikipedia what extreme manufacturing is. Now, open source hardware has not solved the issue of enterprise. Okay? So there is no precedent where an effective uh, open product development process has occurred yet. Uh, everything is, is uh, either takes time or when it gets to the product, it's either crappy or closed source like a lot of projects just go closed when they get a product uh, the ones that are really good they could benefit from some production engineering to make it widely replicable but altogether I have not heard anybody else outside of ourselves talk about the idea of distributive enterprise if you have an open enterprise why not distribute it to others and work like an like a McDonald's except an open franchise mm -hmm. so that's the, that's the thing we're going for so to ex address the issue of getting to product development very explicitly, we're taking extreme manufacturing further and saying, let's do an extreme enterprise event. So just like we can build a tractor in one day, what if we were to develop an enterprise over a weekend? Mm -hmm. Now that's going to take a very carefully crafted collaboration architecture and a lot of people. because. The problem we're solving for one is people showing up and, and going through the development. The second problem we're solving is the the huge cost of hardware prototyping development. Because if you make the metaphor from software, how many prototypes do you have do you do you go through? It's actually not one, two, or three. It's a dozen or a hundred. And if you're talking about hardware, that costs. So we have to address that too. Uh, so the idea is uh, get together, organize an event. It's going to be like a startup camp, except like you guys do. Everyone's working together, and you're going for a, a particular product release, something simple. And actually, mm -hmm. I, I was thinking as as a good candidate would be an open source, scalable, modular electric motor slash generator. Uh, that would be a cool project. Uh, we thought about a project such as like a cordless drill, or a drill construction set but that's a little more complicated I think the electric motor is kind of like our current candidate what we want to do right now is um, test this so this is theory 
and we want to get together see if it's possible to create such a such a collab advanced collaboration architecture and right now I've got like I've specked out okay here's 200 roles right here bam I could do that in a couple of hours uh, I'm working on it right now I think it's gonna get up to like a thousand but architect this event very carefully and then get the people to show up and, and get it funded and put all the resources that are needed to, to one develop the technology and prototypes and product but also then there's there's marketing distribution uh, assets all the business assets that are required to make that into a viable thing such as a website distribution and there's different ways to go about it but um, yeah that's essentially the nutshell of something what we'd want to do and actually on a distribution side uh, I talked to uh, I've got a mentor that works in marketing and he suggested that the best way to do that is do a conditional purchase order so say we go up it's a because it's a zero risk endeavor you say okay if we have this product you're gonna buy a boatload of it from me so it's a zero risk on both sides because if you we don't have it we don't make the sale and the guys don't get ripped off for not having a product so it's a, it's a it could manage the risk share uh, effectively but that's one way to go about the potential idea if, if we're actually developing this product okay then the sales because because we figured out so far that production is not the issue in the current economy it's distribution on two levels one is distribution the standard definition of distribution that means you got to get it out there but also the second part is distribution in the more figurative sense meaning the distributed economy the distribution of wealth altogether so those two things we want to solve for uh, but that's the brief nutshell of this so uh, to uh, how about if we get together our minds on okay what would this crazy collaboration architecture look like to develop products it will take a lot of effort to, to develop this uh, to, to do this event but then from the event the design would be to okay let's get something that's a very clear and visible example that open source is actually working for product development and therefore it can be applied to any product so we change mm -hmm. history and we we change uh, economic history towards a distribute distributive development model where IP free like I like your words you said uh, IP free task solving mm. <laughs> so that's that's so one yeah I mean uh, I don't know if we can pursue something of that nature where we're we're looking at define some project like I, I mentioned the electric motor I think that's a uh, it's a good one because it's got a, like a hundred forty billion dollar global market so that's a, definitely a good candidate it's one of the 50 global village construction set tools too mm. um, but uh, I mean what's your feedback on this what are your thoughts um, I think I, I, I think uh, I, I, I join you in, in, uh, in, in your vision that it's 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 very important to make the open source works all the way to like to have truly an impact at the end um, because one thing is um, you know, the status of knowledge the status of technology and the other thing the other thing is um, the type of organizations that prov that that provides you know the, the services that that creates the, the value and um, and and right now you know we basically have two main model right main models we have the the company model uh your startup or your big company or you know you're in the public sector you're in academia or you know, um and uh, and and it's uh, it's it means that the way you're you're going to uh to uh, to create your business model is going to be highly influenced by who are going to be your stakeholders um so uh, and your shareholders obviously so um, being able to uh, to uh, to go all the way, things that we don't do right now uh, to production, and imagining like uh, not only distributed R and D but distributed uh, production and, uh, and 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 sharing of, uh, of 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 benefits, you know, and uh, that's, that's 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 something that would be huge. It's definitely going to be not easy, <laughs> um, and and we what do you think is a challenge? What, what do you think? I think, is the main I, think I think I think it's a good challenge. We we need to be very careful about what is going to be, in, as you said, the technology, the the device that we want to use for this experiment. Um, so where we have to limit the amount of risk. You know, it's, it's it's a proof of concept, right? So for a proof of concept, you want to you know have maximum what to maybe three maximum uh, you know unknown variables. 
um, <laughs> and uh, and so and, and it's, it's it's already quite complex. So, um, um, and and so yeah, as, as, I think it's definitely it's going, it could be a very interesting experience. I would I would love to uh, to take part in this. Yeah. And the greater picture that this is wrapped in is, of course, the open source microfactory infrastructure, right? Because so this would be an example of a product, and then you need open source microfactories. If you're going to scale this to, I mean, the next phases would be the full open source microfactory, the open source fab lab that does not exist yet, uh, getting those machines in place so that when we have a contest like this, in the future, there will already be a thousand micro open source micro factories or 10,000 worldwide that can go into production. So that's that's the idea. Yeah. One thing we're working on right now is um, one of the big um, programs of, of Drogo in the next few years is going to be entirely dedicated to Africa. And, uh, and so We've been working on that for more than a year now, and, uh, and the idea is to support the development of, uh, of open communities, you know, of knowledge and skills uh, in Africa that uh, must contribute to science and innovation. Um, and um, and so one thing is, uh, you know, in, in, especially in Africa, uh, volunteerism is rare because um, there is so little money that you don't have actually the opportunity to just work for free. Um, so it's a different kind of culture. Um, so being yeah. able to uh, to link what you, you know what someone is doing uh, to you know the potential potentiality of making a, a you know making joining a, like a local team and making a, a creating a business model uh, for yourself is really really important. Um, and um, and so that's 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 something we have haven't cracked at all uh, and so that's one of the goals you know of this program that's going to run for four years at least and um, just to try to understand how we can help make this happen with local actors um, uh, and if we succeed in Africa it means probably we can succeed everywhere else uh, and um, so I think I think it would be interesting um, you know to see um, how um, your technologies and uh, your communities actually could actually get plugged in, you know, with what's happening in Africa. Uh, I don't know, like, what, do you do you have do you have like uh, in your community like active members, uh, African African members? No, not right now. Had a little bit of collaboration, a few developers that were collaborated with, but no, no, we, we have a high turnover. We don't we we can't keep people around. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I get it. Um, so, so that that would be uh, an interesting thing to do uh, because they are especially interested, you know, in open source hardware over there. Well, uh, I mean, so that sounds uh, maybe you you guys are the right ones to do that with us. But I mean, we can we can pitch for, hey, let's do a prototype open source micro factory that's highly independent of the supply chain. So I'm talking about you got the ability to recycle plastic and metal. So so the some of the later phases of our work is that the micro factory that goes to Africa or Missouri in America, it has the ability to take scrap steel and turn it into virgin steel. That's part of the Global Village construction set. But that package, like if I put a budget to it, it's $1.8 million and uh, three years of development time. Uh, I don't know if it's too early for that. We can perhaps do just start with this the proof of concept of the the extreme enterprise thing where we're saying hey we can develop one product that way I feel that maybe from that we're gonna be able to say oh okay now we've got the more ambitious projects such as uh, whatever the induction furnace to, to make steel or whatever that's more ambitious um, but I'm open to, to everything the question is yeah so that priority like what's right like, there, are two, yeah. there, are, there are two subjects um, one yeah. is um, on your side um, you know the, the, the definition of what what technology to focus on and um, and and you know, within your first your own community in North America uh, and 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 then there is you know, in one thing I, I learned is, is that in Africa you need to actually start from the local constraints very, very much. Uh, it's a completely different mindset. 
um, and and competitive and mindset a is the main one. Yeah, it's like it's, it, no bringing an occidental technology in Africa could be actually more harmful uh, than useful. Yeah. It could it could just disrupt the the social binds, you know, like the habits of people and stuff like that. Um, yeah. And um, and so the point, however, is you you have uh, you know um, a mission uh, with the organization. We have a community. Is um, how can we listen to what would be like to the needs to the local needs in Africa and say, okay, how can we work together in creating something? That will work both in Africa and in North America, for example, uh, and and where at the end, um, you know, um, either the the contributors in Africa or even like local entrepreneurs can just take um, the like the blueprints, you know, that have been created and and try to make it work locally with their with their own yeah. uh, suppliers and. Uh, I don't see it happening unless you have the ability to make engines, and process steel you're just uh, gonna mess it up so until we get to that point we ain't ready for Africa cuz um, no I mean the supply chain like um, the ability to make and and the open source engine is part of our deal uh, basically an engine construction set so that requires precision CNC machining uh, mm -hmm. as the basic technology and hydraulics ability to make hydraulics and engines that's where you'd really have to go to if you if you're gonna make any impact there because otherwise it's it's gonna be the same thing the thing breaks and you don't have a supply chain and there you go you're back to zero back yeah. to the situation that has happened to date in Africa is I hear Africa is littered with a lot of uh, broken equipment <laughs> so so that's that that could be one thing uh, you know that we could help though is creating a, a, a local community of people interested in, in identifying who would be the suppliers, local suppliers, to create uh, an African um, electrical motor, um, and um, and and to create prototypes. Uh, but then you know, with real African um, leadership, in the sense that um, you know, even though uh, we were to leave, uh, they will remain, um, and. Um, and so that 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 could be something uh, you know, we definitely work on. Uh, yeah, yeah. And to me, the 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 challenge there is, it's about identifying the stakeholders on the ground. Who is that African guy? Who's the entrepreneur? And who sees yeah. this vision enough that could make it happen? So that's that's some that's typically typically the thing we we help with is that we uh, we uh, we get in the local communities and we we uh, basically you know filter up. Uh, you know, and try to see who are, who are the project leaders who wants to get involved. Yeah. Um, we, we work with local coordinators, and uh, so we, we, basically we, we, we do that part of uh, we help on that part of ideation, team team uh, composition, um, and and coordination. Um, yeah, that, that, that would, you know, like that would whenever. Be something cool. Yeah. I mean, it would require quite a bit of resources. Like the way I always frame the Africa question is like. Man, we got to bring the, t be a little bit further along, like if we had the precision, full, fully developed precision machining and melting, metal melting and re remaking steel from scrap, then we, I think we'd pretty much be ready because then we can make the parts that are necessary to be free of the supply chains. Mm -hmm. So it would be easier to funnel that money into a place like ours here where once we have enough of that and you eliminate all those risks of, of culture supply chains and all of that and i don't want to make it sound like oh we're just going to import more technology no it's going to be about developing the appropriate technology here because i mean the fourth world in america yeah. and, i mean that's a real thing and i Absolutely, live in that yeah. world yeah, pretty yeah. much um yeah i agree mm -hmm. yeah uh, we can do that too yeah uh, and you probably know that more better than me so uh, yeah yeah so, i mean yeah that's where like if we're going to do anything meaningful because then yeah if, if we go straight to africa i think you you get into a like you said about controlling for the variables you just add a bunch more variables to something that's already revolutionary so so simply to develop the open source fab lab or open source micro factory and and i think the fab lab guys are pretty good there's um just had a meeting with some of the people who are doing the open source machines in the fab lab it's close it's getting there you know the 
the definite outstanding items, I mean, we still don't have a good router table, CNC machine, mm -hmm. robot. We have 3D printers, we have circuit mills, we have small laser cutters. So those three things we have right now, that's not, that's not good enough yet. We, we, need, we need torch tables, CNC torch tables, precision CNC machines, uh, at the minimum to be now getting into okay now it's some serious stuff like we're taking metal and machining it into pre precision parts uh, it's not there yet um, but with our stuff I mean we are I mean we've done just to fill you in on the status of completion let me tell you um, let me just show you this page but this is what we have so far we're about 33 percent done So here you can take a look at all that we have and it's, um, have done in terms of the prototyping level. So, yeah. Now we do we do have because of the modular the modularity. I mean, yeah, we're like ready for prime time and a lot of things. Like if you look at, for example, the Micro Track 2017, the small tractor. I mean, that is so close to a product. Um, we're close to a lot of products, but this, once again, this goes to the, to the difference between productization and the, the prototypes that are ready for productization, right? So it's that last mile problem that we're now trying to solve through in the extreme enterprise method. Mm -hmm. And uh, that looks great, man. Um, so, 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 so that, so that of, uh, and so, for example, um, how do you how do you structure um, like all the work being done? Like, uh, do you have a repository? Is it every is everything on the on the everything is wiki? on a wiki? Wiki is our repository, and then we store software on GitHub and video on YouTube and docs for collaborative editing. Um, FreeCAD is awesome mm -hmm. right now. It's perfectly suited for large-scale collaborative process. That we, we've got that down. I could get a bunch of people to to, to design in parallel. Um, now, part mm -hmm. of it is part of this extreme manufacturing thing. You know, we're solving for show, people showing up because to date, the most we had is that we worked with like 50 people in an extreme build. We build the CD home in five days. Uh, development team and design sprints we never had more than like two dozen people um, so we just don't have the experience at the hundred and thousand level we do have a lot of experience on like a dozen level and this stuff is I think is all scalable that's where we get our lessons on the scalable collaboration architectures I think that's it's not a that's a no-brainer I mean there's agile methodologies second Toyota paradox and uh, open source product development methods that production is and scalable production I think that's that's a done deal we're solving for people showing up and actually uh, taking it to the final product releases mm -hmm. yeah and what, what what would you say is your main bottleneck right now uh, in, uh, bottleneck like, actually is, is it, yeah. interestingly I would call that collaborative literacy is the culture in people that um, I think in a lot of cases, a lot of uh, elite people just, the way we're presenting the open source method is, no, they don't see it. They don't see the, they get threatened. So I think the biggest challenge, in my view, the biggest challenge to the extreme enterprise is to so-called trick people into not getting afraid of open source. Um, because I think there's a mm -hmm. lot of resistance that comes about, like it's a no brainer, which has already been shown in software, right? that if you do collaborative development, you do more. You can get more, cheaper, better, faster, stronger. That's a known phenomenon. Now, we do understand that the cost of physical prototyping is high, but that's just called capital. <laughs> uh, society has developed means to handle capital since about 1602, when a, when a Dutch East India Company was formed and a corporation was invented. I mean, pe people know how to get capital today. <laughs> and I'm not suggesting that form of capital, but um, given that, like the thing, there's a thing that's missing, and it's about 200 years of industrial history, which says that everything that was made in hardware is proprietary. That we j unfortunately have the industrial revolution, 
for the last 200 years. We haven't snapped out of it, so it's very hard to get people like, you know, people at John Deere or like um, whatever, Caterpillar, that's like, it's not even on their radar that it could be a t methodology that yeah. works. And, and, and I would say it's, it's, it's all right, that's the, the way the world works today and yeah. uh, they, they, won't, they won't change. Um, it's not in their advantage. Um, you know, so, um, however, uh, you know, you know, if we're able to take it step by step, you know, uh, making good proof of concepts, uh, yeah, and 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 you know, creating beautiful stories. Beautiful what? And inspire people, uh, you know, to, to do the same. Sorry. Uh, I asked, would you say make beautiful what? Sorry? Did you say make beautiful stories? Oh, beautiful stories. Yeah. Stories to, uh, that inspire people. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's, that's, that's so important. Um, yeah. and, um, and also, what, what we do um, with Jogo, one thing we I think we understood at some point is that putting tools. in the first uh the first line of arguments that you want to serve to convince is actually not the most efficient way of making uh of attaining your goals it's like because open source is is a concept that is not not even shared but understood as you said by a lot of people um and so there is a lot of um preconceived you know, ideas about that uh, and become counterproductive so what we do is um, is we to, to perform. We just want to, you know, make sense happen on subjects that are ignored by normal companies and, uh, and institutions. Uh, we want to provide, uh, uh, you know, opportunities for students who want to get uh, experience. Sorry, can you can project. you maybe like refresh? We're having a little bit of difficulty. Can you maybe like turn off your video? Oh sure, yeah. I, I, you're cutting out a little bit, or maybe, yeah. Yeah, is it better now? Yeah, yeah, I think uh, I think so. Go ahead. Okay, okay. Well, let me actually try something else. Yeah, no, I think I, I think the your sound is good I... now. Yeah. 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 Uh, it should it should get even better. Uh, so yeah, so. Focusing on on um, you know open source is not the most productive uh, approach. Yeah. Uh, to uh, to convince people, so uh, mm -hmm. we we uh, we use we use a, a different path, um, which is to uh, to show uh, you know, open source is, is is a tool, is a philosophy. It's it's not it's not the at the end it's not the impact that people are looking at, um, and and so what we say is um, we're here to um, you know, facilitate science on yeah. subjects that are ignored by normal companies and institutions. Yeah. We are here to of offer opportunities to students that uh, wants to be able to, you know, uh, work on impactful projects uh, and people that have no networks to uh, to to find such projects in. Uh, we want to uh, to to provide sense to um, to uh, to. You know, to professionals and and people, educated people around the world. We want so, uh, you know, at the end, the world is run is run by by the communities. Uh, and so, and at the end, to 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 make a community run, you need to have a, a common understanding of of sharing, and that's what we call open source. But not not saying the word open source actually is better than saying it because it's such a it's such it could be such a complicated concept that it deserves sometimes you were you were. Your discourse, like your your argumentation, um, but I, even, that, even though at the end, what we're doing is make uh, the world more open. Um, so and it's been successful. Um, you no, know, it's it enables us to to talk to a more diverse base uh, of individuals um, because we're you know we're providing arguments uh, that they can understand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, positioning definitely um, 
in a non-threatening way, that's that's a good deal. I think the way um, if we talk about the extreme enterprise method, I think that that addresses the issue simply by uh, putting an event and kind of a thing where that issue does not really come up because it's an exciting event and it's like it's framed as of course it's open source centric in some way but that's not like that's not how we're pitching we're pitching it in, in an inspiring way i would say an inspiring non-threatening extreme way like it's kind of like a red bull contest as opposed to a uh, a deep dive into open source <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah anyway exactly yeah hmm. so one, th one thing um now if one thing I, I would be interested in, in in trying also with you is to see if uh Dragon could be uh, any useful to uh, to your existing you know ecosystem and, and community uh, community of projects and people uh you know in trying to uh you know if you have ongoing projects uh you know to see if by using uh Dragon you could actually gather more collaborators or you know would make it more easy for for, for you to uh, to provide updates for what you're doing. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to figure out the best way of making this happen. Um, yeah. And so uh, uh, tell me more about the unique value proposition of Joggle compared to any of the other efforts. Like there's WeShare or this or that. Like Fab Labs. Um, how would you summarize? Oh, uh, so how would you critique any yeah, of the other so moment movements? So no, Fab Labs, there, you know, it's it's a type of space. Um, uh, Wisher is a network of people interested in collaborative economy. Um, it's a community. Uh, Juggle is is first, it's a it's a tool, you know, uh, that is and and it's a it's a, it's an organization that is here to serve. Uh, your community, and so you, you as as open as open source ecology, you're not going to join um, another community. Now, you're not going to join the Fabra community. You're not going to join the Wisher community uh, because you know it's it's going to collide and uh, and and you know, it's, Jogo is is a neutral place where it's made to make the you know, collisions of communities beautiful. Uh, in a sense. So it's mm -hmm. uh, it's 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 a place where you get to see what authors are making, what they need, um, you know, if there are some trends. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, you get to uh, to look for collaborators, uh, share some some news. It's uh, so it's it, it's it's part of social network. Um, it's we don't own the community. It's not our community. It's made. It's a patchwork of, of communities that are already existing or being created uh, on the fly. Uh, and so, so that's you know that's our mission is really to uh, to make sure that at the end we have as many people that can collaborate with each other in order to to build uh, you know the knowledge and the tools of tomorrow uh, openly. So yeah, but it's not but but what 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 people are doing is not owned or it's not even marketed as being Drogo. You know, it's like the the diagnostics project for example is not a Drogo project, right? It's a uh, it, it bears a different name, uh, so it's uh, uh, yeah. so you get to retain you get to retain your answer in identity, and so if you want to create um, like open source ecology, uh, you know items uh, or projects, uh, it's it's is there you know it's, you don't have the the struggle stamp on uh, anywhere. Yeah. So that's but, the main difference. But I think uh, I think also the main difference is your open source centric or clar clarity, your your license clarity, because both both we share like uh, Wikifactory, Fab Labs, they don't have it. They they mm -hmm. say open source loosely, and for mm -hmm. which reason? Like there's there has been a lot of stuff that's not open on those platforms. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. But anyway, this is good. That's good. So. Um, if we were to put put our um, stuff on Juggle, how would that look like? Uh, so sh should we put a like start? How would that what look like? What I would like? do is what, what I would do is uh, I would take I would pick you know a couple of uh, active projects that you have right now, mm -hmm. um, and and that you want to uh, to animate in the sense that you you want to uh, to be able to share your current needs so that you can look for people, people can look look for you, yeah. also for your projects. 
uh, you it's, it's, it's going to be a place where uh, you know you you get visibility for probably for from from a community that you don't know doesn't doesn't know you uh, yeah. but that is looking for opportunities to uh, to to contribute voluntarily um, yeah so, so that, that, that that's how we we'll start for uh, start from now tomorrow though uh, let's say starting in September um, organizations such as yours will be able to actually have like a, a, like a full page page you know uh, portal in the sense you know, on, on global meaning that uh, when I go to open source ecology page on Drogo, I get to see all the aesthetic projects, people, you know, action and stuff like that. Um, and so it becomes easier to navigate. Uh, it's not something that is there yet, no. Yeah. Um, you have your, I'm going to apply for a job at Joggle. <laughs> I got spontaneous job applications, yeah. Um, okay, uh, we can definitely, um, I can definitely start looking at what we can put up there. Uh, where do we go there? So just uh, apply as a project or? You don't have to apply. Um, it's open. You just, just get on there. You create a, a, you create a profile. Yeah. Um, don't mind uh, the, 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 the creation process. Right now it's a bit uh, bubbly. Uh, it's getting better, um, and you, once you have created a, a profile where you have indicated, you know, uh, who you are, the kind of skills you have, interest, uh, and uh, you can create a project. Uh, and then you can just, you know, take uh, one or two projects that are really active in the community, uh, describe what what are those projects. Uh, you can put the links to, uh, to your yeah. wiki uh, on the description. There you can also um, you know put some documents if even ne if necessary you can uh, create uh, needs uh, so you Good. get to describe uh, the typical needs in terms of skills or resources that you're looking for stuff like that yeah. yep um, regarding uh, have you guys ever thought of or have you thought about um, here's the next point uh, we're looking at starting up a podcast I need a partner in that but uh, <laughs> anything um have you have you thought about a podcast because because i think one one thing that i'd like to do so I, I started a little bit on writing a book on all this stuff uh on open source ecology and how to basically leverage mm -hmm. a large collaborative process um part of it is a lot of the due diligence of making the contacts with all the existing players in the world so i've been studying a lot of more about what other people are doing uh, i want to do a podcast uh, do an osc podcast on on this, have you ever thought of a podcast, or is that something you'd be interested in, or maybe we possibly like? So we've thought, yeah, we've 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 thought of doing more uh, media creation. Um, mm -hmm. It's something we're so we're going to launch um, what we call Juggle Live mm -hmm. uh, in a couple of weeks, um, where the idea is to, we 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 take one hour with a project on Juggle. And we focus on this project, and yeah. we try to, uh, to you know, to you know, try to understand the history, the needs, where it's going, uh, to invite the community, also. So it's more, it's also participatory. Um, uh, so it's not, it's not a podcast by itself. Uh, Is that something uh, you'd be, you'd be interviewing people with, or someone else on your team, or? Yeah, we we'd be interviewing the project leads, um, and uh, and. You know, giving them basically a, 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 a like a place uh, to uh, to express themselves more. Um, Would you actually um, be the person doing that, or somebody else on your staff? Uh, I may be doing it. I don't know. I, so every Wednesday at six p.m. Paris time, we have um, what we call the global community call for the Open COVID nineteen program. So uh, it's been the sixteenth today, uh, and um, where. Uh, uh, basically, I, I need to make that host uh, the community for an hour when where everybody gets to provide updates about that project, so that people can what is, be aware um, of what they. In terms mm -hmm. of some open hardware, from the open COVID, what is the something like something that we could actually produce? Is there anything that we can sure, get involved yeah. in? Sure. Um, one of the project uh, is an open source uh, syringe pump. Okay. Um, so it's it's uh, it's pretty advanced. It's not finished, 
um, people have already worked on the electrical board. Uh, um, some of the mechanics also is done. Um, it's it's pretty it's pretty well advanced. Um, so that that's something you could definitely join and contribute and uh, and uh, typing it, improving that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Is that like end, you know, if if the go the goal, so one thing we do also is we we, we do partnerships with um, uh, like hospitals and we we make the, the the product being tested, the prototype being tested. And so the, the goal at the end that those projects get um, you know uh, recognized and uh, and can so that it can be used um, in a professional environment. So uh, so. Such as such as a syringe pump could be used, you know, for example, uh, if it's manufactured by um, an entity that is regulated. So that's very important because it's a medical device. Uh, but you just need to apply for a license and be uh, be audited to see if you the way you make things is uh, is correct. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, at the end, what matters is that this can be uh, produced as as low as possible. Um, yeah. Right now, we. Uh, I think the the price uh, you know, that we're you know I, what did they say already? I think it was around three hundred euros, something like that, for a syringe pump. When, when today it's about two or three thousand. Two what? Two or three thousand euro? Yeah, that's that's the price today. But uh, we are targeting uh, a price of uh, ten times less than that. Yeah, um, what's the application of a syringe pump in the medical field? So it's it's very much used to administrate drugs um, in mm -hmm. a patient in a controlled manner. So yeah. you put a syringe inside with a, a given concentration of a drug and uh, then you, you control the, the flux basically uh, for a certain amount of time. Uh, so it's been uh, highly used, uh, especially for patients that were um, in ICU beds, beds uh, that you have to maintain in a coma. Yeah. Maybe we can, uh, I mean, I always think about, yeah, like if we can get our hands on any of these finished products and yeah, get certification. Like for example, there's also the, some of the ventilators, one that's fully open source that I think yeah. is so there is a good project enough to be there certified. Is a, uh, yeah, there is a ventilator project that's going on also. Um, yep. uh, it's, yeah, so it's, um, I think what would be definitely useful is to um, to to see how your community, uh, you know, could get involved in some of those, um, you know, more medical projects. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hi, my name is Thomas Landra. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm very cool. I, I, I think they heard myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> checking you out on. Just looking at all the links. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so let's see. So get on a platform. That'll be cool, definitely. Um, so what else? What else should we be thinking about now to follow up from this call? Well, I How, think, where do we go I next? I think we should we should definitely. Uh, so uh, let, let's let's try you know building something uh, like a collaboration around either existing projects that are on the board or some of your projects, um, and then. Yeah. Let's let's have uh, like an ongoing discussion conversation about you know, your vision of uh, a distributed company uh, for extreme manufacturing. Uh, that's that's that, that would be cool. Uh, do you have any any documentation of any any written thoughts on on the distributed companies or like some of the best practices you said about how you're running your organization so we can learn from that how you structure the partnerships and all of that, or is that mm. kind of in your head? Your experience. I think, yeah, I don't think I've uh, put down actually the thoughts yet. Yeah, I, I should probably. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I think um, you know, like I, I personally think that the the extreme uh, the extreme enterprise experiment would be something we definitely want to collaborate on, since that's I think it's kind of gaining momentum or like energy in terms of I th I think the feasibility of it. It's a, it's a big idea, but I think it's, I'm the more I think about it, I think it starts to make more sense. But it is a very ambitious effort, so we'll need we'll need help. 
it, it is, yeah. Uh, making a company is already hard. Um, making right. it distributed uh, is even harder. Yeah. Um, so it, it needs it, it needs to be applied to a case where it absolutely makes sense. That uh, making a normal company for that would be even harder. You know, <laughs> that would be the typical example where a distributed company makes more sense than a centralized company. What? When you when you uh, find that example, uh, you won. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but yeah, let's uh, definitely uh, let's keep comparing notes on the open and distributed enterprises. Who would you say um, is your closest competition or leaders in the field of doing the kind of larger collaborative development? Can does anyone come in to, mind or not really? To be, to, to be frank, um, if you take um, like the different aspects that makes trouble. We currently have no real competitor. We have competitors in, you know, if we, when you're talking about, you know, having communities of researchers, you have, uh, you know, uh, academia.edu, you have ResearchGate. It's not, it's not the same, right? It's really centered on academic researchers. It's not that we do open science. Uh, it's, it's mostly centered around the ego of the researcher, giving them score, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, then you have uh, open open innovation platforms such as uh, Incentives, and Sigma. Uh, but those are platforms that are being used by freelancers or small companies to answer calls from companies, from big companies. Uh, and it's not IP free; it's, uh, so it's pretty much proprietary. Um, and there is no collaboration between the, the, the teams that are playing. Um, you have out there uh, other kind of uh, networks, you know, uh, that are more dedicated to social enterprises, social entrepreneurs, social impacts, like that. You, don't, you know, what what the thing we do differently is that we uh, we we are we R and D and science center. So, but we do that for for impact. So that's it's it's kind of a bummer to say that you have no real competition because it's always good to have one. Uh, but right now, it's not really the case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the kind oh, you of could, oh, you could say you could say that like, uh, that a network such as Fabrab Network. It's it's again, it's very it's very centralized. It's not it's not neutral. It's, it's so it's a difficult position to have. It involves a very unique, uh, special business model so to uh, to develop a lot to, to remain. Control. Yeah, no, I'm, I think the bottom line is there, uh, the kind of work that you're doing, I think that the kind of integrative approach is pretty rare these days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I agree. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Well, this is great. So, yeah, I like it. Let's. Let's see where we go from. So I think possibly, yeah, like um, I'll think more about, okay, what specifically can we really rally around and learn since you guys are, no, I, I, as far as I can see, yeah, you guys are doing it right in terms of sharing resources and, and thinking about bigger problems. That's really good. So that makes it a ripe environment for rapid learning, like for us, you know, mm -hmm. so that's good. And I'll, I'll think about how we can, what, what project would be right and how we can maybe structure it together. So maybe let's think about, um, yeah, just continue, continue the conversation. Awesome, man. <laughs> well, Martin, it was a pleasure. Um. Yeah, 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 my pleasure. That's great to meet you. And um, yeah, let's see how we can keep working together and comparing notes. Definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, if you want, you, I don't know how you, do, do you use a, um, kind of like a, a tool like such as Slack or something like that? To, uh, uh, yeah, to we actually, we do have a Slack and discourse channel. I don't use it a lot, um, typically. It's okay, uh, it's, if you happen to using it a lot, uh, there is a thing we do is we can share uh, channels between uh, workspaces. Like in slacks okay you're on there all the time yeah but that's our main tool for uh, 
managing the team and, uh, and the larger community. And what is that channel? Um, so what we will do is to create uh, a special channel, which is very cool, uh, like I want to say called Jogo, uh, and that would, that would appear on both our Slack and your Slack. And so it's a, it's a, it's a common uh, channel where we can write to each other without actually changing Slack. Okay, that sounds good, that sounds good. Yeah, I mean, no, like one thought that comes up definitely is, yeah, I mean, if we can learn all you guys know organizationally because because I mean the biggest thing for me is I've been very careful about the kind of funding model and how to get this bootstrap but our but our current thought about it is okay we're gonna distribute uh, the enterprises that we develop we have people supporting themselves by doing physical production through the open source micro factories and then they contribute effort back to to the organization and continuing R&D but we're trying to be very careful about not getting stuck on not scalable mechanisms. And I think the only really scalable one is entrepreneurship and then physical product sales. I mean, it's definitely physical product. I mean, just goods and services that we're actually producing as a way to get mass creation of right livelihood. But definitely, like on the organizational front, yeah, we haven't really, uh, we, we just have the, the t turnover. We don't have an organization built up. So maybe... I don't know, maybe you can coach me on uh, the idea of how we actually do get the structure because it's getting kind of, uh, I'm at the point where I really need to, yeah, get a support team going. And the, the, mm. the first person that I think, like, if we're going to hire people, it would actually be a production manager for producing, like we do the 3D printers and other things that we can do. So that's like the route we're going, but we totally, like, don't have the organizational part built in, so maybe maybe I could learn learn from you on that more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Always pleasure. Yep. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Where are you based, actually, Martin? Uh, Kansas City area, in the center of the U.S. Okay. 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 I was trying to understand what time zone you are. Yeah. Um, 2 p.m. here right now. Mm -hmm, All right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I'll definitely, I'll definitely think about some more concrete. Like right now, I'm kind of stuck. Like, oh, yeah, this is awesome. This is like great. I'm just kind of like brain dead for what specifically where we go right now. But I think that's going to emerge. It's all right. <laughs> it's all right. Let's, uh, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a good first meet. I'm, I'm yeah. very glad that we could have this discussion. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, um, let's. Let's continue having it. Yeah, uh, yep, yep. You have you you have. We, I have your mail. You have my mail. Yep, yep. Um, and just make sure if if you want to do this Slack thing, you need to have like the pro version. So I don't know if if, if you don't have it, it doesn't work unfortunately. Oh, okay. Um, Not sure we have the pro version. I'll check with uh, Andreas. He's from Sweden. He's doing that. But as a nonprofit, you can get it for free. Uh, ah. So you may want to, uh, to ask for it. Yeah, pro Slack for free. Okay. Yeah, excellent. Another thing that comes up is like, okay, so I'm meeting you, and it's okay. That's really positive. It seems like some of this public interest development is on the rise in some way. I mean, I think there was definitely a a big dip with the MakerBot enclosure and stuff like that. Like since about that time, nobody believes in open hardware. But I think right now there's a little bit of an emergence, like especially with COVID, of people recognizing that hey, we got oh, yeah. to look. Sorry. Definitely. Yeah, that that I we can perhaps, uh, yeah. work together. And the thing is, it's like I want to find more people, so I'm actually putting attention. Like like say, meeting you is a definite uh, effort for me to reach out, you know, and just try to find more people. But I think there's a mm -hmm. few more people that we need to find like that they'll be critical to this broader collaboration because I think they're out there and and the new the COVID has actually maybe created a few more people like that. Yeah. We'll see. I completely agree. Yep. Um, you should you should probably reach out to uh, the what's it called? Um, the guys of uh, open source medical hardware the, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, are you in touch with them? Can you maybe introduce me? Uh, I s 
using I don't have I don't think I have their emails. Yeah, no, I haven't contacted yeah, that that's another group I think that's really promising right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 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 mostly organized around the Facebook group. Yep, yep. I'm sure like the leadership of that is probably we need to be talking to them, yeah. 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 So uh I would definitely try to reach out to them. Yeah, yeah, and definitely like keep continuing. If you see some super cooperators out there, you know, put me in touch with them. Definitely want to continue that. All right. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, Thomas. Well, thank you. My pleasure to meet you, and we'll continue the discussion. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye, Martin. Yep. Talk to you soon. Take care. Bye bye.